I mean, back to school no longer just means backpacks and binders. More and more kids, especially older students, need things like broadband and memory. Fox 19 tech expert Dave Hatter is here with an overview. Good to see you, Dave. I know Notre Dame Academy in Northern Kentucky requires kids to get an iPad these yep, days. Yeah, gotta have an iPad now, and that's increasingly common to see schools have specific kinds of requirements like that for technology. So, so, so things are just getting a lot more advanced as far as school supplies go. They, they are, like digital textbooks. You know, that's one of the things that you know people need to think about when their kid comes home and says, "I need X or Y." You need to check and see what the school really has. And again, digital textbooks—that's a they're sort of up and coming area, but they're different people that make them. And mm -hmm. So there's lots of stuff you need to check out before you just plunk down one. And you found lots of helpful things uh, in the tech world, the, the first of which had to do with memory, I guess? Yeah, like a flash drive. You know, a lot of times you're going to need to get stuff from school, take it back to school, whatever. Always good to have a flash drive. They're really cheap now. Uh, probably a four gig drive would be enough. The other thing I would remind people is these things don't last forever. They're pretty rugged, but I've seen lots of them fail. You know, I have some students at Cincinnati State who will mm -hmm. occasionally have one that dies. So do not rely entirely on the flash drive to put all your work on it. That so you found a couple point. of places that, that are helpful, right? Yeah, yeah, like Dropbox or Evernote. You know, again, Dropbox like, and Evernote. Evernote is this really cool application that will work on a phone, a tablet, or a PC, and it basically lets you take notes or assimilate any kind of information that you want and then sync it up with all these devices. So you could be at school working on a tablet, go home, get on a regular PC, access the same information. Okay, Dropbox the same thing. The, Dropbox is different. kind of similar. It's more like a flash drive in the cloud. You know, you can store stuff in it. You don't necessarily need a flash drive, but both are good ways to go if you just want to basically keep information in different places without having to have it on you all the time. Okay, a lot, a lot more young people have laptops these days, yeah. and you say you should have a lock for those. Well, yeah, if you're, especially if you're going to be in a public place where you may have it around and someone could easily walk off with it, you can buy a lock. It's not foolproof, you know, someone could basically rip the lock out of it in some cases, but it's better than nothing. It's better than someone just walking up and picking up your machine and walking off. Okay, a solar backpack. This yeah, I thought, is neat. I think this is pretty cool. Obviously, lots of kids have backpacks. If you're going to have a backpack anyway, and you can spring for a little extra, they're not cheap. It's got solar panels on it, and you can plug your phone or your tablet or your PC or whatever you have in the bag in, and it'll keep a charge while you're doing your thing. But it's about two hundred dollars yeah. for one of those. It's not cheap. Yeah, right. and all in one printer. Everybody needs. Yeah, it. well, because you're going to need print stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You know, at the last minute you're trying to print out your term paper or whatever. <laughs> there's no PCs available at the lab. You know, who probably hasn't experienced that if right. you're going to college? So an all-in-one printer, basically, it's a fax scanner. It does all that stuff in one, and they're really cheap now. Okay, netbooks, notebooks, I mean, all those little computers are really popular right yeah. now. Yeah, you know, netbook is just a smaller laptop. Generally, they're not as powerful, but they're a lot less expensive and a lot more portable. The ultrabook category is kind of interesting. What is that? An ultrabook really is, it's got some of the basic characteristics of a tablet. It'll come on right away. It's got a much longer battery life, but it's still a full-fledged computer like a laptop. They're generally thinner, lighter, but they're also usually a lot more expensive. So it's nice. It's a lot lighter, it'll last longer, but it's a lot more expensive than a traditional laptop. Some people only want to use Apple, some people don't care, you know, is there, are there some criteria for buying? Well, I think that's a good question, Sheila. I think the first thing I would do is check, does the school have any kind of requirements? Are they going to have any kind of software your student's going to need to use that won't work well or won't run at all on a particular platform? Because you may go buy a Mac and find out that everything is office-based, and while you can get office for the Mac, it's typically going to cause problems. Or vice versa, like you mentioned with Notre Dame, if you go in there with a notebook and they expect you to have an iPad, Might well, that's going to be a problem. So you should check out what kind of things they require, again, like with these digital textbooks, and make sure that whatever you're buying is going to fit well and not cause even more problems. All right, good deal. So I have a link to uh, Dave's website, Libertas Technologies, at fox19.com in the big red box. But also, uh, Emily, our producer, has put together all those links that Dave talked about in one place. Just go to the website and look for Dave's tech ideas for back to school. Thanks a lot, Dave. My pleasure. We'll